What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Wrestling with Jonners. This is episode 104, and this is our special NXT Takeover Portland review. And uh, I've got Mags from Badlands Pods uh, on the on the uh, Skype. Uh, how are you doing, Mags? Uh, welcome back to the Wrestling with Jonners podcast. Great to have you back on board. And uh, it's almost like I've never been away. Almost. <laughs> well, yeah, it was uh, just a little a little over a week ago we had you on uh, episode uh, 102. 102 I think it was but uh, great to have you back on board and uh, thank you for agreeing to help us out with this special NXT TakeOver Portland review sir It's absolutely my pleasure, any time I can come on to uh, Wrestling With Jonas is a good day so yeah I was uh, I was stoked when you, uh, when you extended the offer well, yes, uh, because I've been on your show a couple of times recently, uh, waiting for those episodes to drop. So we 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 were kind of like uh, I think we speak to each other more than we do our own partners at the moment. But uh, uh, <laughs> it's all it's all it's all for the for the love of podcasts and for the love of what we do. Um, but uh, NXT Takeover Portland is what we're here to discuss. Um, there were there were six matches on the card. Um, I don't think there was a, a kickoff match. Now usually they would have five matches on the on the main card on the main show and uh another match would go ahead on the kickoff but i don't think they had a kickoff match this time round i could be mistaken but no, the six didn't. matches that were advertised the six matches that were advertised were on uh, the main takeover portland show uh, and uh, a hell of a show it was indeed um so uh, let's let's go straight into it first of all but before we talk about the individual matches max um obviously the card was pretty stacked you know, six really great matches from top to bottom. Uh, what what were your kind of thoughts and your expectations going in to take over Portland uh, last night? And uh, were you excited? Were you, you know, anticipating one match over another? Um, but uh, what, what were your thoughts and expectations ahead of actually watching it on the WWE Network? Well, to be to be honest with you, Jonas, I was miffed. At, I was miffed about the show because. We every single time there's a takeover, it just we. I want to get to the point where I'm saying that this takeover wasn't the best ever takeover, <laughs> and we just can't. We don't get to that point every every single time. They just keep raising the bar, and yeah, it was just looking at the card uh, in before the the event took place, and you just my first thought was, wow, how stacked that this 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 card is and then when you actually sit down and think about the people who weren't even on the card you had the likes of Velveteen Dream you're like Eo Shira, Candice LeRae just how stacked NXT as a as a as a company is it's just mind-blowing the quality of wrestlers in in that that um kind of brand of WWE uh yeah for me this was probably the the most stacked NXT card ever um, there was one match that kind of stood out to me as as maybe didn't belong, uh, but when we when we get there, uh, that match absolutely blew me away. So they kind it kind of did look like it, it belonged at the end of, at the end of the show. But yeah, what an amazing show! Just absolutely amazing. Yeah, I think I know which match you're on about. We'll get to that very very soon. But uh, I mean, my my thoughts and expectations going into it, I was really looking forward to it. Um, I look forward to these NXT TakeOver specials more than I do any WWE pay-per-view, to be mm-hmm. honest with you. Yeah. Um, you know, that they, they, they never fail to impress. And uh, I've seen all the others from uh, the very first one, TakeOver Arrival, all the way through to this one here. And they, like you say, they do seem to ramp it up every single time. They do seem to get better and better and better. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's just... Uh, perception because you always like to think that the one you're watching the most recent one is always uh, the best one but uh, the quality never fails to impress uh, but looking at this one you, you you're always thinking well if this is the quality of matches if this is the card that they've got um you know for us in february uh, what are they going to have in store for us over wrestlemania weekend i mean they must have something pretty damn good uh, lined up for us on any weekend. We might have a little bit of an idea as far as where some of the matches might be going more towards the end of the card. And we'll talk about uh, where TakeOver Tampa, uh, w- what it might be looking at a little bit later on in the show. But the first match, and what an incredible way to kick off TakeOver Portland. And it was 
For the North American Championship, Keesley versus Dominic Dijakovic. This is, I think, their fourth or fifth match together. Um, they, they described it on commentaries as the rubber match because I think they'd drawn a couple and won one each. So this is possibly their fifth match uh, by my reckoning then. Um, but these two big behemoths, it's, it's almost like King Kong going up against Godzilla. Um, but they know each other very well. Their chemistry has always been on point. I think even before they signed with NXT, they wrestled each other on the indies. Um, so they really know each other very, very well. And what they tend to do in every match is give us something new, deliver something we haven't seen before. And uh, I think there were certainly some spots in this match I'm about to talk about uh, that, that uh, uh, certainly wowed the fans in Portland. Um, but um, let's have a look. So, you know, what an epic way to kick off TakeOver. This match started at a bit of a pace. You had Keith Lee dropping Dominic Dijakovic all six foot seven inches of him with a standing Hurricane Rana. That was pretty impressive. Dijakovic got a close near fall from a corkscrew moonsault. That was impressive. Uh, Dijakovic then got another really close near fall uh, with an avalanche feast your rise. That's normally his finishing move that he does um, on, on the canvas, but he did it up on the turnbuckles. But uh, Keith Lee kicked out on two the match went to the outside where uh, Lee struck with a, a, a gigantic double hand chop, not once, but twice. Um, and, uh, you know, from my vantage point in the comfort of my own living room, that made me wince. God knows what it was like to be there in the arena and heard uh, it, it must have sounded like a gun going off. Uh, there, there was Then there was the spot of the match, if not the night, where Dijakovic placed Keith Lee in one of the announcer's chairs at ringside before delivering a springboard somersault sent on from inside the ring down onto the seated Keith Lee on the outside. Uh, that got a Mamma Mia chant. Um, but uh, that was pretty impressive. And to be honest with you, Dijakovic was was an inch away from almost knocking himself out on the table. Mm -hmm. He really had to nail that move with pinpoint accuracy, and he did. Uh, Dominic Dijakovic, then then he, he stood up from a spirit bomb, albeit holding his neck, uh, but then had to kick out of a second one uh, delivered by Keith Lee. Uh, the big men then get up, get up onto the top rope where Dijakovic delivers a, an avalanche Spanish fly. Um, then uh, he, he wasn't able to capitalise on that, and he wasn't able to get the, the big Keith Lee up on, into uh, the, the Feast Your Eyes move um, due to the punishment that had taken through this massive match. Uh, this allowed Keith Lee to deliver a fireman's power slam for the 1-2-3. He retains his North American Championship in this epic, gigantic opener. And I think, you know, it, this being their fifth match on NXT in their series in the last 12 months or so, they certainly raised the bar again. After the match, Keith Lee showed respect to his opponent, Dijakovic, by pulling him up to his feet, helping him up to the middle turnbuckles so that he could take in the applause from the fans in Portland. But Mags, what a way to open um, any show, any takeover. Um, possibly it has to go down as one of the better openings, uh, opening matches on any takeover. Um, but uh, give us your thoughts on this one. I loved it. What about yourself? Yeah, um, for me... Um... I, I tend to think of like these NXT shows uh, when you have multiple undisputed era matches. They, they tend to start with the tags with uh, with, uh, with uh, Red Dragon uh, starting. Mm -hmm. So it was it was different to start with with these two big beefy boys uh, kicking off the show. And wow, what a benchmark they set! Uh, oh, usually, yeah. usually uh, the, the saying goes, if you're not in the main event, you want to be in, in the, the, the curtain jerker because you want to set the bar and go back to the, the guys at the back and say, follow yeah. that. And follow wow, that. how, how <laughs> do you follow that? I mean, you, 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 you covered so many amazing spots that these two, by the law of, of physics, should not be able to do. <laughs> they should not be able to do. But one spot that kind of got overlooked through through all this like amazing um, wrestling action was the 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 spot where Keith Lee caught uh, Dajakovic after he did the Fosbury flop over the top ropes. Yes. Um, and he just caught him in midair. And it's like, wow, these guys, the, the chemistry between them is phenomenal. And the, it's a, the kind of match that if they, if NXT were to revisit this a few months down the line, they could keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And you could never get bored because you can see that, that they're, they know how to work with each other in the ring. And, yeah, just a great, great way to open a card. Keith Lee looked absolutely phenomenal. 
Dajakovic looked as looked amazing as well, and I loved the the little show of respect, and and it it felt to me almost like that was a kind of a good bar from um, from Dajakovic to maybe he'd be going up to Raw or SmackDown. I hope not because I still think there's quite a lot for him to be able to do on that NXT roster. But yeah, what a great way to open a match, and I, I actually pitied the people who were following that because it, that was just it was phenomenal. It was absolutely mm. phenomenal. It really, really was. Well, um, the match that did follow it was the, the 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 advertised street fight between Dakota Kai and Tegan Knox. This is a feud that's been building for a few months now, since I think about November when we had Takeover War Games. Dakota Kai turned heel on her best friend on a on a team ke- a team kick uh, stablemate by uh, closing the the kind of the, the mini cage door onto Tegan's previously surgically repaired uh, knees. Um, and uh, they did have a match a few weeks ago on NXT, which was a quite a quick match that Tegan Knox won. Um, so this was an opportunity for Dakota Kai to get a little bit of revenge off of that. But this was the big this. Was was meant to be the big blow off match between these two and it was a street fight the match started right out of the gate with Dakota Kai attacking Tegan Knox during her entrance uh, then they got into the ring the, the, the bell rang for the official start of the match uh, Akai she went underneath the ring she got some toys out including a cricket bat, which she attempted to, to wallop and to score a six with uh, using Tegan Knox's head. But Tegan Knox ducked and uh, you saw that the cricket bat explode against the ring post. That was pretty impressive. That would have done a lot of damage. Um, Dakota Kai then uh, walloped a, a trash can lid across the face or into the face of Tegan Knox. Uh, that looked and sounded pretty painful. Uh, Knox got a two count from a high angle German suplex down onto a trash can. That was pretty impressive. Uh, Knox got another two count from an, an avalanche choke slam and uh, a molly go round. Uh, Dakota Kai even she, she she then duct tapes her opponent's wrists to the ring posts on the outside, allowing her to deliver two running kicks. Um, uh, uh, Knox then connects with the, the shiniest of wizards, but chooses not to pin. She chooses not to to cover following her finishing move. Instead, she brings in a table into the ring, places Dakota Kai onto the table with a steel chair wrapped around her head. Knox then goes up to the, the top turnbuckle, looking to deliver a dive of some sorts, uh, but she's stopped in her tracks by a, a mystery figure um, who hops up onto the ring apron. This turns out to be Raquel Gonzalez. I think uh, we previously know her as uh, Rena Gonzalez from... Mm-hmm one of the uh, May Young Classic tournaments a couple of years back. And uh, Gonzalez delivers a choke slam of her own, sending Tegan Knox down onto the table uh, with, with Knox landing very awkwardly, uh, almost uh, as if her, her head was the only part of her body that uh, connected with the table, the edge of the table, that is. And uh, Dakota Kai, she, she comes over, takes advantage of the situation, covers, gets the pinfall victory. Thanks to the mystery assailant. Thanks to uh, Raquel Gonzalez in this really, really impressive and very entertaining street fight. Now, I think this is possibly the match you were alluding to earlier. It certainly was, in my mind, the match that I was least looking forward to going into TakeOver because we've seen it before. And to be honest with you, the feud hasn't really kind of caught me up until this match. And now fully invested uh, from word go during this match. And uh, um, I think... Yeah, that they went out to impress, and they certainly impressed me. I thought that everything worked. Uh, we mentioned about the chemistry between Dijakovic and Keith Lee from the first match, and I felt that uh, Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai knocked it out of the park. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, 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 you could say it's slightly controversial ending to the match, uh, but maybe it helped to prolong the feud between these two, adding a, a third person into it, um, Ala Gonzalez. Um, but um, yeah, I, I thought it was a really good, good match. It looks like we're possibly going to get another match between these two, maybe over Mania Week weekend or possibly on an episode of NXT uh, but uh, give us your thoughts on this one Mags. Yeah you were right this is, this was the match that, that I alluded to that kind of uh, on paper didn't look as if it would be as the same kind of calibre as, as the rest of the matches and I am happy to, to say that I am being proven wrong this match absolutely same. knocked it out of the park um, and especially after following such an amazing match as, as the opener um, yeah I've always been a big fan of Dakota Cars, but I felt she kind of got lost in the shuffle as a face. 
uh, especially when you've got the likes of you had Kari Sane and you had uh, Candice LeRae, those like really big, big personalities, and 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 Dakota Car kind of like was getting like lost in the underground, and and the heel turn was absolutely brilliant. It's really made her kind of stand out as a character, um, but as amazing as the match was. Uh, the the ending uh, really didn't sit well with me. Not in terms of 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 it because it was a sh- shenanigans ending. I, I I do like the uh, when we get these kind of dusty finishes so we can prolong a feud that that kind of does have some legs still in it, especially with them yeah. now being one on one. It was more why wow, was uh was Raquel Gonzalez getting involved? Uh, and I'm gonna kind of paraphrase uh, Mr. Warren Hayes in this. Um, what's the reasoning behind it? Because when you see um, Raquel holding Ka- uh, Dakota Carr's uh, arm in victory after the after the match, Dakota looked confused, like she didn't know what was happening. So that to me said that, that says that Dakota wasn't aware of it. So then the other kind of... Um, the the angle you go with is if they're a, a big a big name who comes in to to basically lay waste to someone to make a statement and I don't think that Raquel Gonzalez is that big of a name as as good of a wrestler that she is I don't think um, that she's got that kind of gravitas as a as a as a, a wrestler to to pull off that kind of angle so I'll be interested to see where where NXT take this from here but it just felt a little almost confused the the way it ended for me mm, yeah and you know there wasn't much of an explanation during the broadcast last night you know mm-hmm. you were quite right about saying Dakota kind of looked a bit confused when she was having her arm raised by Gonzalez after the after the end of the match um but uh yeah, I mean, I, I was quite impressed with um, Rina or Raquel Gonzalez in the Mae Young Classic, and she she has uh, appeared once or twice on NXT, and I thought that she was very good in the uh, brief appearances that I've seen her in. So I think she's definitely a capable wrestler, but we don't know anything about her. We don't know why she's involved in this feud, um, but uh, I'm sure we'll get an explanation of sorts on Wednesday, or at least I hope we will. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it'd be interesting to see what develops from here i'm guessing that this was all done so that it will prolong the feud um and no doubt we'll get uh, another match somewhere down the line um but uh, yes very interesting indeed um some some bit of storyline development there um but uh, we, we don't need to know all the answers yet i'm sure we'll find <laughs> out soon um but uh yeah very very interesting um then this was the match that I was most looking forward to going into it, uh, Mag. So I've got to be honest with you. Finn Balor versus Johnny Gargano. I, I've said on previous episodes of the Wrestling with Johnny's podcast, this is arguably the, the number one and the number two best wrestlers on the NXT roster, in my opinion. Um, but uh, in this one, he started off at a bit of a slow pace. I was quite impressed for the first few minutes. They were uh, exchanging uh, submission holds and uh, lots of kind of ground-based, map-based wrestling between the two. Um, um, so when, when you when you're telling a, an epic wrestling match or an epic wrestling story, it always starts off nice and slow, so you can kind of ramp it up. But then uh, Balor started to focus on Gargano's left knee with a, a dragon screw, um, and, and then several stiff. Uh, stomps and kicks to Johnny's knee uh, Gargano then uh, was able to nail a rolling sent on off the ring apron into Balor on the outside uh, before Gargano gets a two count from a slingshot spear uh, Gargano manages to avoid a double foot stomp instead connecting with the slingshot DDT for another close near fall uh, Gargano slaps on the Gargano escape twice in succession with Bar- uh, Balor managing to escape both times the second one via a rope break uh, Gargano then re- repays uh, Finn Balor with a John Woo drop kick of his own, uh, typically uh, performed by Balor, of course, uh, sending Finn Balor hard into the railings uh, at ringside. But it's Balor who gets the upper hand, thinking quickly, dropping Gargano face first onto the Spanish announce table before drop kicking Johnny Gargano off the announce tables and hard into the railings at ringside. Uh, Balor then rolls Johnny Gargano back into the ring, delivers a coup de gras perfectly setting himself up to deliver the 1916 DBT uh, before covering, getting the pinfall, uh, getting the victory over Johnny Gargano in this brilliantly executed wrestling match. It went 27 minutes. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, 
you know, the, the show started with that epic match between Lee and Dijakovic. We had that brilliant street fight to follow. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously Lee and Dijakovic said follow that. And uh, this match definitely followed that. But um, my question to you, Mags, I mean, obviously I want your thoughts on the match. But to where does this leave uh, Balor? going into WrestleMania weekend and take over Tampa. Uh, could this potentially mean that he's the, the natural number one contender to whomever is the NXT champion uh, going into WrestleMania weekend? He's definitely got to be in that conversation. I think mm. uh, uh, a victory over Johnny Gagano definitely puts you in the, the upper echelons of, of that NXT kind of uh, ranking almost. Um for me, the match, though, especially the beginning, was it was almost like an abs contest. How many abs were in one one <laughs> ring at the same time? <laughs> it's Just, disgusting how many abs there were, Mags. Disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> I've and, only got one. <laughs> and I was eating. I was eat, actually when they when they came out. I was eating a turkey and ham sandwich, and I, I looked at myself <laughs> and I thought. Wow, they they just absolute spec. They look like they chiselled out of granite, and they've got like like I said, they they arguably the best two on uh, out and out wrestlers on NXT, possibly yeah. even on in WWE itself. Um, yeah, the match was phenomenal. I love the uh, the little uh, nuances that that Johnny Gagano brings to a match using Finn's own moves against him. Uh, the spot on the, on the the shotgun drop kick over on the the announcer table was just an absolute thing of beauty, and it it kind of like reminded me of when when Finn got injured uh, from the the buckle bomb. Uh, from yeah. Seth Rollins on 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 the railings, and it, it kind of looked like a little bit of a throwback to that. But yeah, I, th- I think that Finn needed the win. Um, is is not had whilst his matches have been uh, really really top draw whilst he's been NXT. He's picked up quite a few big losses, and I think this throws him right back in the mix. And we all know how basically bulletproof Johnny Gagano is when it comes to these takeover matches. He could lose every single one and still be up there as one of the the top guys in NXT but wow it's just it's every single match seemed to be kind of wanting to one up the one that came before it and yeah it was just just a phenomenal wrestling and and you said it was went 27 minutes it could have gone another 10 15 for me it, it that time just absolutely flew by yeah, and a, a few things that really stood out for me was uh, I loved the the aggression from Finn Balor. Uh, we didn't get that type of aggression when Finn Balor was a babyface. I don't think we, we saw anything near the quality of uh, how Finn performed in this match when he was on the main roster. Um, and so I loved that. Uh, of course, he's he's a fully fleshed heel now. He's back to his Prince character from the New, uh, New Japan days. But he does have that kind of added edge to him, which I really, really love. This is possibly his best match in a long, long time. And um, what, what I really, really liked about this is obviously the chemistry between these two were absolutely fantastic, but it was a decisive win as well. You know, you, you obviously had that spot on the outside where he shotgun drop kicks Johnny Gargano off the announce table into the railings, rolled him inside, coup de gras, 1916. You know, it, it was just perfect uh, a perfect ending to a perfect match to be honest with you but it was decisive there was no kind of shady finishes and uh, no shenanigans uh no kind of kick out after the three count it, it was decisive and that's what i liked and i think it is setting balor up possibly like you say he's got to be in the conversation for a championship match over wrestlemania weekend but you're talking about you know top stars within your nxt roster that has to be kind of vying for the nxt championship on a wrestlemania weekend card take over tampa i think balor's certainly got to be there and uh, we'll talk more about the, the nxt championship and you know who the champion is coming out of uh, portland very very soon but uh, i'd like to see balor in that main event on uh, April the 4th. But um, uh, any final thoughts on, on uh, John Gargano, Finn Balor, before we move on, Mags? Um, yeah, I don't really want to go too in-depth because obviously we've, we're going to touch on the, the the championship match afterwards. But uh, yeah. it, it's good to be able to... Uh, and NXT are, are really, really good at, at doing this. It's good to be able to look back on what happened at the at that match and, and know that it kind of telegraphs 
what's going to happen later on in the card. You could see how disappointed uh, Johnny Gagano was uh, in in losing to Finn Balor, and it's that kind of disappointment that 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 leads to what what happened later on in the show. Yeah, and it's a really interesting point. And one thing I do want to do, and uh, uh, for those of you that haven't seen it and are listening to our review to try and catch up with how Portland went uh, went down, I don't know if you noticed this, Mags, but there was some boos from the crowd towards the end of the match towards Johnny Gargano. I don't know if it's because he was kind of acting a little bit differently to mm-hmm. the way we expect Johnny Gargano to react, but he was getting some boos towards the end of that match. And uh, that was a, a bit of a prelude, possibly. Um, yeah. But uh, then then we get um, another really good match. Rhea Ripley versus Bianca Belair, the NXT Women's Championship on the line. Um, what I really liked about this was uh, a, a great entrances. You, you had an air of excitement before this one. Um, they've really built this match really, really well. And when you think back to when Bianca Belair was last in an NXT Championship match, it was against Shayna Baszler. I think it was TakeOver Phoenix from last January, so January 2019. And Belair was out of her depth, unfortunately. But you can really, really see her development through 2019 into 2020 and how she's uh, been kind of built um, and and, and put over. And uh, she had a fantastic run in the Royal Rumble, of course. I think that she had the joint most amount of eliminations. I know Shayna Baszler had eight. Bianca Belair also eliminated eight people at the Women's Rumble this year. So she's obviously got massive things ahead of her, but it was a different Bianca Belair stepping through the ropes this time round compared to when she went up against Shayna um, last January in Phoenix. But uh, in this one, you know, both wrestlers exchanged some seriously stiff chops between one another before Belair delivered a, a hair whip. Um, I always like it when she does a, a <laughs> hair braid whip. It just sounds incredible. And I think I, I remember when she fought. Chain of Baser. She actually cut Baser open with she her did. hair mm-hmm. braid whip. Um, and then there was a, a gorilla press slam from Bianca Belair um, to Rhea Ripley in the centre of the ring. Both wrestlers then reverse each other's finishing moves uh, with Belair dropping Ripley with a spear. That was pretty cool. Uh, Ripley then gets back to dropped high over the top rope to the outside. And it looked like a pretty awkward, almost painful landing for Ripley. Um, I think had she had rotated any any differently or landed any differently, she could have seriously injured her ankles. Or, uh, But uh, fortunately, she was fine. This set up Belair to hit a, a somersault sent on over the top rope onto her opponent on the outside. There, there, there's a battle on the top rope between the two of them, leading to Ripley rolling underneath Bianca, hooking in the riptide. And when she executed a finishing move, she hooked the leg, got the one, two, three. She retains her NXT championship in this really, really good match. Now, I, I've seen some reports and I've heard one or two other reviews of this match saying that it's possibly um, the, 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 the least well-received match of the night. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought that considering um, how... Uh, how Bianca Belair's last championship match went against Shayna Baszler or over a year ago. I felt this was a hell of an improvement from her. I think the two wrestlers really, really... Um, I, I felt that they, they they worked really well together in the ring during this match. And it's delivered better than my expectations, to be honest with you. And I was happy with the results. Um after the match, we had the Queen, Charlotte Flair. She, she kind of dove into the ring, rolled into the ring... Uh, nailed Ripley and uh, she grabbed a microphone uh, saying that uh, she, she's uh, made up her mind and she'll be seeing Ripley at WrestleMania. Uh, Flair adds further insult to injury by hitting a natural selection on Rhea Ripley. Uh, Charlotte even threw Bianca Belair into the steel wing post on the outside uh, to add one more exclamation point to proceedings. Now, Mags, there we have it. Charlotte has given her answer and uh, as to who she will fight or challenge uh, being the World Rumble winner, of course, at WrestleMania. She's chosen Rhea Ripley. We thought this would happen uh, straight off the bat, to be honest with you. It's fairly predictable, but I like the way it was executed. I like the way it played out at the end of this match. And um, I, I don't think we've heard the last from Bianca Belair on what happened here um, after the match with uh, with Flair throwing her into the ring steps. But um, first of all, I thought it was an excellent match. Um, you know, this is match four out of six. Uh, what did you think of this one? Yep, I agree with you. I thought the, the match, uh, the in-ring, whilst looking at it objectively, was probably 
the weakest. Uh, I can understand a little bit of the 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 backlash it's got on on social media for the the way that the finish came about. It kind of felt like it was a really quick end almost. Mm. It like almost came out of nowhere. Um, True. And I think a lot of the backlash as well is the fact that Bianca got pinned clean, especially after she had such a great showing um, at Survivor Series and then at, at, at the Royal Rumble for her to kind of almost go out with a whimper at the end, kind of like rubbed a lot of people uh, the wrong way. Uh, then we got obviously the uh, Charlotte doing the attack, um, which kind of... I understand it. It, it 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 puts the 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 final stamp on her accepting Rhea's challenge for that uh, NXT Women's Championship, but I think it would have been a better use of Charlotte if she attacked before the end uh, rather than wait till the 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 match was was over. Especially if they're going to allude to a triple threat the way that they did with uh with with the the final kind of uh, push on on Bianca at the end. Uh, yeah. If the, if that was the case, then why not cause uh, a, like a, a a disqualification or something like that to to almost like hit the nail home that that these three are going to be facing off at WrestleMania? Yeah. Whether whether they just want to keep their options open and and see how it goes. But I think both women came out looking really well on this. Um, my only issue is how many times does Bianca Belair? get to the top of the mountain and not be able to kind of to get that that final win i think uh, i read somewhere that she'd had five title matches all together and she's lost every single one of them um wow. is she getting to the point where she's the braun Strowman of, of nxt where she's always going to be one of the big stars but never gonna kind of get over that that hump uh, i hope not because she's got a massive amount of charisma she's an amazing talent and I think she'd be a formidable champion at NXT. It's just maybe the the wrong people at the wrong time with the likes of having characters like Shayna Baszler and, and Kairi Sane and now obviously Rhea Ripley, uh, really big, strong characters and really, really good technical wrestlers. Uh, it might be just like a case of the waiting game for her. But yeah, so quality match and um, another it's four amazing matches out of four for me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if this is considered... Uh, you know, the, the weak uh, match of uh, the, the six, then uh, um, I, I, I'd, I'd like to have six matches like this um, on uh, any episode of Raw or SmackDown or anything like that, because uh, this was a really good match as far as I was concerned. Mm -hmm. um, but at least the attack from Charlotte, it, it kind of um, obviously it allows us to know who she intends to wrestle at WrestleMania, of course, that being Rhea Ripley, but then her attack on Bianca Belair, that leaves a bit of an open storyline as to where they're going to go down that path uh, with, with Charlotte and Bianca, whether Bianca might possibly be added into uh, the WrestleMania match. Now, I think that the popular choice would just for the, for the match at Mania to be one-on-one, -on -one. Um, but uh, I, think Rhea, I think Bianca Belair deserves... Uh, maybe a match at Mania. And uh, I did say, um, I think it was during the listeners' questions on uh, this past Saturday's Wrestling with Jonas podcast, that if uh, Bianca Belair is not involved in championship match, the NXT championship match at Mania, then I'd very much like to see her in the women's battle royal. And considering how mm -hmm. strong uh, she, she performed at the War Rumble, I would pretty much have her pegged as one of the favourites um, in that women's battle royal at Mania, um, if, if that's kind of what happens. But I, I'm also intrigued to see, you know, if and when Bianca Belair and Charlotte get their hands on one another, that will be another epic match. But uh, let's move on to, to the, the second to last match, the semi-final match, you could say. What a lot of people are saying was the match of the night. Now, uh, um, it's, it's, of course, for the NXT Tag Team titles, uh, the Undisputed Era, the champions going in versus the Broserweights, Pete Dunne and Matt Riddle. So the Broserweights here, uh, the Broserweights, sorry, come out um, in their Broserweight buggy or however they want to describe it with middle, uh, Matt Riddle trying to get the crowd involved in, in singing that song about Bobby Fish and how many uh, fish he could fry. Or however it goes, I'm not going to try and get. And I'm certainly not going to buy the T-shirt. To be honest with you, I thought that uh, <laughs> the song, <laughs> the song as good as it was, I think it uh, died a bit of a death uh, when he was trying to get the, the fans involved. But uh, into the match anyway. So Pete Dunne 
starts the match like a bit of a bull in a china shop delivering and dishing out x-plexes all over the place uh riddle gets the, the hot tag he goes on a bit of a tear with brotons fisherman suplexes he even gets a two count from a bro to sleep uh the, we then see uh tan a tandem floating bro and a moonsault combo from the bros awaits that was pretty neat o'reilly and uh, riddle uh they have a pretty decent exchange of the ring managing to get the fans stood up in appreciation uh those two kind of wrestlers with a a mixed martial arts background and uh, i'd like to see more from matt riddle and uh, kyle o'reilly maybe in a one-on-one encounter somewhere down the line uh there's some excellent chain wrestling from both teams uh but both teams are playing in reverse and submission holes to great effect um pete dunn then inadvertently Inadvertently knocks Matt Riddle off the ring apron when uh, uh, when Riddle comes back into the ring. He inadvertently spears his own partner, Pete Dunn, allowing Undisputed Era to uh, get a very close near fall from that exchange of botches. Uh, the bros awaits, however, eventually get back on the same page and with an X-Plex powerbomb combo uh, before Pete Dunn and Matt Riddle na- nail a stereo kind of knee strike kick to the head uh, to gain the all-important pinfall and we have new NXT Tag Team Champions and just when you thought there might be some tension or maybe some you know communication issues between Don and Riddle uh, then they more than prove that they are talking the same language by becoming the new NXT Tag Team Champions so Mags I enjoyed the hell out of this one we've seen some epic encounters involving the Undisputed Era over the years when you, you look at their the matches they've had with Mustache Mountain Danny Burch and only Larkin um, and so many others. This match certainly has to be up there, but uh, what a match. And uh, I'm really, really happy for, for Matt Riddle and Pete Dunne. I think they're deserving tag team champions. I thought they've gelled really well. I, I'm quite entertained by the, you know, their kind of skits that they've been doing on NXT recently. Um, and uh, yeah, but, but Pete Dunne playing this straight guy to Matt Riddle um, and his kind of comedy antics. But um, wrestling, um, looking at it from a wrestling perspective, I thought this was a very, very solid match, full of drama, full of close near falls, um, full of good chain wrestling as well and some some great tag team action. Um, but uh, we have new tag team champions. I'd love to know your thoughts on this one. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go back to the NXT previous. Uh, those skits were the best <laughs> thing that happened in wrestling last week. They were yep. so good. Like I said, they, they play off each other so well. And Pete Dunne playing the, the straight-laced Brit and and Matt Riddle just being Matt Riddle. Uh, and there was one point in, in one of the skits where um, Pete called Matt a smart arse and, and Matt took it as a compliment. It was just <laughs> It's just absolutely brilliant chemistry. Sneaking into Triple H's uh, plane and locking, it, <laughs> locking themselves in the hold. And I think... Um, Triple H said in it might have been in the uh, the the post um, the post event uh, press conference about how his plane smelt of smoke. So I love how they're all kind of playing into playing into to this. But yeah, great match. And I I have have waxed lyrical about how much I'm a a big uh, proponent of tag team wrestling and how WWE have kind of fell off the bar with when it comes to tag team wrestling and this was this was exactly my wheelhouse. I don't think you get many tag teams better than the Undisputed Era uh, for for not only bringing that the kind of new uh, martial arts based attack but also being able to use those kind of tag team um, skills where they cut one guy off and they kind of like weaken their opponent and then th- that hot tag to Matt Riddle was was it was epic absolutely epic uh I like the way that they they left enough in there that that there could be a future split and a match between uh Dunn and Riddle with the the kind of yes. miscommunications I love I love how they've left that seed there to to plant and they'll that I'm sure that'll be germinated as time goes by. Um, going back to the 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 uh, entrance, yeah the 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 song was funny when they did it at, the, uh, first in the, time. the first time. <laughs> and um, I, I'm gonna again I'm gonna paraphrase uh, Mr. Warren Asia. Um, it kind of felt like it was Bruce Pritchard and um, with the way they found something that was funny, so they milked it. Uh, when we had the bouncing fish on the screen uh, with the lyrics, yeah. it, that it was kind of like they jumped the shark without the crowd 
Uh, I'm going to pay massive props to that crowd because that crowd was lively all night. There was never a time where that crowd uh, dropped off, but you could tell that they weren't into that song and, and it was kind of, they got to the point where it had been milked. But, yeah, glad to um, to have Pete Dunne and Matt Riddle as champions. It kind of freshens up uh, that that tag team division. Uh, sometimes you need that. Uh, we had it recently in, in New Japan where Finn Juice got the, the titles off uh, Gorillas of Destiny and it kind of gives it like a little bit of a fresh feeling. And I think that's what this is going to do. Uh, Pete Dunne without a title in WWE doesn't look the same and so he's, I'm glad that he's got one back. And this to me was, I mean, getting onto the main event uh, pretty soon, but this was kind of like the golden prophecy crashing down around the undisputed era's ears almost and yeah, yeah. what's happening but I, uh, very exactly. very interesting um but uh like I, say, I i what i like about this is it's, it's adding a bit of freshness to the tag team division in nxt i know that matt riddle and pete done a fairly new combo anyway they did you know they really brought the uh, dusty rose tag team classic to life um i, I loved their final match with uh, gyv um and like I, said, I do think they add a, a real freshness to the tag team division um I, I, I agree with what you're saying. Obviously, the miscommunication at the end of the match is almost certainly going to lead to a, a match or a feud between these two somewhere down the line. But I don't want that to happen too soon. I want them to hold on to the titles for a while. I want them to be a tag team for a while. I want them to be entertaining for as long as they possibly can as a tandem. I want them to defend their championships. Um, at uh, TakeOver Tampa at WrestleMania weekend. So I certainly don't want to split up and have a one-on-one -on -one rivalry going into WrestleMania weekend. As good as a match as that, that will be, um, I want them to keep hold of the tag team titles for a long time and uh, let it build. I don't want them to have miscommunication in every match they have. Um, but, uh, you know, like you say, let that let the, that little seed kind of, you know, um, build and let's say six months from now let something happen and let's kind of revisit what happened tonight in six months time uh, but not too soon and let them have a really good run with the titles because I think they're going to be fantastic with them but what they do need is they you know as fresh as they are as a tag team and as fresh as they bring uh, you know that freshness to the tag team division they need some fresh opponents as well and uh, by the you know I would like to see the undisputed era move on to uh, you know new challenges whether that be on uh, a sideways move to Raw or Smackdown who knows um, but I would certainly like to see Pete Dunne and Matt Riddle have some fresh competition as well so you know gonna throw out a name there bring back uh, Alex Shelley to be a permanent tag team partner mm -hmm. with Kushida Kushida's yeah. not doing much in the in the singles division at the moment on NXT uh, so bring them back and have a nice little feud between uh, the time splitters and the bros awaits and I'm going to throw that one out there for my listeners I think that will be a pretty tasty match dare I say it for takeover temper dare I say it dare mm -hmm. I say it but uh, there we go that would be lovely that would be lovely anyway Mags just uh, kind of following off the back of your little comment there regarding the, the golden prophecy coming to an end that leads mm -hmm. us nicely to the main event so obviously going back a few weeks ago they 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 held the north american championship with roddy strong as uh, an excellent north american champion um losing to keith lee of course um tonight nxt portland We've just explained how the Bros awaits of the now new tag team champions beating the Undisputed Era, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. Going into the main event, you've obviously got Adam Cole as the kind of the last member of Undisputed Era carrying the gold, going into his match uh, as the NXT champion against Tommaso Ciampa. So this has had a really good build over the last few weeks, I have to say. Uh, you know, what are your kind of thoughts and your expectations going into this main event? Obviously, you know, you've got the... Uh, the, the the possibility of um uh what, what does he called about goldie uh going yeah, back to Golda, daddy yeah uh, goldie's Golda. got his own little nickname for the belt um or whether adam cold who i think has been a fantastic nxt champion uh retains it and, and goes on to wrestlemania weekend but what were your thoughts your expectations going into this one did you have a uh kind of a, a preference one wrestler over the other um but uh, before we talk about the highlights of the match give us your thoughts before going into this one yeah, um, I honestly thought that, I mean, way before the the event started, I thought that this was going to be the end of the, the Golden Prophecy. I thought that uh, 
the, the Undisputed Era don't have a lot more to do in NXT. They've bought, they're all multiple times champions. Um, yeah. And we kind of would be like rehashing over old ground almost. Um, so I felt that, that, yeah, maybe it was it was time for for the Undisputed Era to kind of to move on. And then that was that was kind of rubber stamped with, with the, with that core main event where the, the red dragon lost the tiles. I felt that, yeah, that, that's, that's nailed it for me. And Adam Cole is going to lose this match and the undisputed era are going to go on their merry way. Um, but the one thing that NXT does so well is throw these little spanners in the works. I mean, we can all remember how long everybody expected Shayna Baszler to be moving up and they just kept finding ways to keep her there as champion and kept finding new and fresh feuds for her. So uh, there's always that kind of like mindset in just like niggling away at the back of your mind. Uh, but for me, the it's it's the build up that was 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 so built towards Goldie returning to Daddy. We yeah. Tommaso Champa was the front and center of every show. He had the promos, he had the vignettes. It felt right that that he was going to reclaim what he'd lost. Um yeah. it was gonna it was gonna take back Goldie, it was gonna uh, it was going to be the champion again. And going into the match, that's a hundred percent what I thought was going to happen. And mm. then, and then the bell rang. <laughs> and then the bell rang. Well, I, I know that when we did our uh, takeover Portland predictions on uh, this past Saturday show with Ashley Clements, I actually predicted that Tommaso Ciampa would come out as the the champion. But uh, let's get into it anyway. So, in one of the more painful spots of the night, uh, Adam Cole delivered a wheelbarrow suplex, oh. sending Tommaso Ciampa backwards uh, into the announce table with his with his uh, top of his his, his back and his neck uh, and his shoulders landing into the edge of the announce tables and that looked like it sucked big time and uh, I think Tommaso Ciampa um, he, he was definitely in some trouble there for a few minutes uh, Cole then uh, gets uh, drop kicked out of midair from an attempted Panama Sunrise um, with uh, Champa getting a close near fall from a torture rack bomb. Uh, there, there's more drama to come as Champa gets uh, another close near fall from an avalanche air raid crash uh, from the turnbuckles. Uh, the battle then goes to the outside again with Champa dropping cold with a power bomb onto the announce table. Um, however, not being satisfied because uh, the table uh, kind of uh, stayed its ground, Champa delivered a second second power bomb this time smashing uh smashing coal through the table champa um and the that even the fans thought that the match was won from a project champa uh, inside the ring and, and the fans were on their feet for this uh, epic match at this point so the match continued with even more close near falls from both wrestlers uh, Adam Cole manages to deliver he, he manages to deliver I'm so excited I can't get my words out to a Panama <laughs> sunrise on the outside but champa somehow manages to hit a willow's bell and a fairy tale ending for another very close near fall then uh Fellow UE member Roderick Strong comes out to distract, um, followed by Fish and O'Reilly on the outside. But it's Cole who gets dumped uh, to the outside, followed by a dive over the top rope by Tommaso Ciampa, taking out all of the members of the Undisputed Era on the outside. Then there's a referee bump. Sending the ref to the outside just before Champa was about to deliver a fairy tale ending. Uh, then Gargano, Johnny Gargano, um, a former DIY uh, teammate and uh, bitter enemy, and then best friend again of Tommaso Champa, Johnny Gargano comes out at first, showing signs of support for his former DIY uh, tag teammate before turning his back on Champa, nailing Tommaso Champa uh, with, a, with a, a shot to the head with the NXT Championship belt. Uh, Cole then takes advantage of the situation, hooks a leg, the referee recovers, comes back into the ring, counts to three, and Adam Cole retains his NXT championship. Johnny Gargano turns heel in the process. This match goes 33 minutes, Mags, and um, yes, 
we, we, you know, some people might have telegraphed it from, um, you know, the back end of his, Johnny Gargano's match with Finn Balor, quite possibly. But um, I think it did take a lot of people by surprise. I was shocked by what happened. I thought Gargano was out there to kind of neutralise the attacking undisputed hero, uh, era foes um, that, were, that were kind of getting in Champa's way. But um, no, he, he wasn't there to neutralise undisputed era. He was there to uh, put an end to Tommaso Champa and his attempts to bring back Goldie. But uh, it looks like the match that we should have had over WrestleMania weekend last year, um, we're likely to get this year, but with the roles, roles being reversed. And it looks like uh, it's going to be Tommaso Ciampa as the face going into Mania weekend against the heel Johnny Gargano. But uh, this was a really eventful match. Like I say, it, it, it kind of had its ups and its downs, its backs and its forth. It was, it was a real kind of um, back and forth solid match that goes 33 minutes, a hell of a main event. Um, but uh, what are your thoughts on what went down uh, last night in the main event then, Mags? I thought that this just nails how good of a performer uh, Adam Cole is and uh, how good of a performer Tom, uh, Tommaso Ciampa is. They absolutely blew me away with this mm. match. So, so good. And what a, what a, what a turn of of epic proportions to Massa Champa, who when he, when he uh, attacked um, Johnny Gagano was the most hated heel in all of wrestling. Oh, and, yeah. and last night he was beloved, absolutely beloved uh, to the point where he made a fan's probably laugh time when he kissed him on the head, uh, when the fan was asking for a half oh, hour and he kissed hilarious. the fan on the head. <laughs> that, that, that guy's never going to wash his head ever, ever again. No. Um, and then, for me, the one of the best spots in the match was actually from my wrestler of the year last year, uh, Roddy Strong, when he got hit with the the, the Willows Peak and, and he hung from the ropes with his legs. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. It just shows how quality of uh, selling the, the Undisputed Era, they, they always kind of like met their opponents look so, so good. And uh, I alluded at the beginning to the um, the it, this being telegraphed by Johnny Gagano's loss and the, the kind of like pain on his face. Um, yeah. I don't think I, I suspected it, the turn would happen. Uh, and like you, when he came out, I thought, hey, is, this is Johnny Gagano coming to, to neutralise the Undisputed Era. But it's yeah. looking back at what happened, what amazing storytelling we're getting. It, it's, it's Johnny being jealous of Tommaso getting everything that he wants when Johnny can't have anything... That, that he wants and it was he's always going to look back at uh, when he was at the top of the tree it was Tommaso that that, that knocked him off his perch and it's it's a, a throwback to that where uh, Tommaso is about to reach the, the the peak of the mountain and and it's Johnny Gagano that, that's knocking him off I, I really love that kind of storytelling and this 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 feud is something that I would happily revisit. This is kind of like the Undertaker and Shawn Michaels feuds from uh, WrestleMania 25 and 26. It's that kind of thing that you know it's coming, but you're you're all about it. It's going to be an epic match. Um, heel Johnny is absolutely amazing, and face Tommaso Ciampa is just a sight to be old. So yeah, we're a great match. Um, telegraphed the majority of us with uh, Adam Cole picking up the victory and being the only one of the Undisputed Era to, to actually have goal now. So uh, it'll be interesting to see where where it goes from there. Maybe it will be Finn Balor, like, like we've, uh, we've said at the, at the top of the show. But, yeah, just great, great storytelling. And this is why I love NXT so much, that we can predict and we can say what we think is going to happen, but we never quite can, can know for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think if I'm going to be nitpicky about some of the moments during this entire show, is that there were so many big spots, there were so many big moves, Mags. But um, I felt that, that some of the some of the selling after some of these big moves were a little bit, oh, a little bit hit and miss. To be honest with you, you got it 
on some occasions you didn't get it on others mm-hmm. and um I, 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 there, there was some criticism online about um after Tommaso Ciampa and, and that, that 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 when he got wheelbarrowed suplexed into the edge of the announce table kind of back and neck first and how he did sell to start off with but then as the match kind of proceeded he kind of almost forgot you know, that spot see, would have been a perfect opportunity for him to continue selling, continue going back to the neck, and it kind of dropped off. And you know, he, he, he continued the match as if nothing had happened. When that was probably the biggest thing that did happen in the match to him, mm-hmm. certainly. But um, um, I, I know that the same could be said when you watch New Japan. I mean, they put you know each other through the ringer in those matches, real strong style in New Japan, and uh, quite often, you know five moves down the line, it's forgotten, you know, what, what big move started the match with. Um, but to, do you agree with me at all? I mean, maybe the selling just needs to be a little bit more consistent on some of these big matches. Yeah. I mean, if you look at, for instance, the, the, the opener, uh, I think the selling in that, that match was absolutely on point. I think uh, both mm. Keith and uh, Dominic kind of showed when when a, a big move was hit, that it did hurt them, that it, and they did carry it on into the match. Um, maybe it's it's because of how big of a show this was. I mean, it was the first uh, takeover on a Sunday, the one of uh, the first kind of standalone takeover, and maybe it was just yeah. they wanted to to set their mark and and go all out, and you kind of can forget like like those little nuances, um, but. Yeah, I can understand it getting criticism, but then again, it's it, it's it's a good problem to have if you, if that's the kind of thing that you're going to be nitpicky about. Yeah, yeah, very true, very true. And don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the hell out of uh, the, the hell out of this. And what I really enjoyed about um, all six matches is they were all individually different. They they all had mm-hmm. their own flavor. They all had their own uh, kind of you know they, they you couldn't confuse the matches they were different they had their own kind of style and they were you know definitely different to one another and i thought that was great and that's one thing that nxt always managed to deliver is, is that regardless of whether there's five matches on the card six matches in this case you know all of the matches are booked um you know differently and to have a different feel to one another which is absolutely fantastic and you go to a lot of shows where you know a lot of indie shows potentially and you know a lot of the matches are, are are identical um but uh, yeah nxt definitely do a stellar job in how they book their matches um and make sure that they will kind of tell a, a separate story to one another but uh, all in all definitely a massive double thumbs up from me mags um kind of what, what are some of your kind of takeaway moments from nxt takeover portland from last night i, I think it goes to show that why this is the premier brand under the wwe umbrella for me um I, I love the the freedom that the, the 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 wrestlers get. I love the fact that there wasn't a cool down match, uh, and like you like you just said, that each match had its own like identity and its own story. Yes. It wasn't formulaic. Um, yeah, it was just it was just NXT doing what NXT does best, and that's putting on absolutely stellar wrestling and great storytelling. Um, and I'm just. It, I'm just glad it left us like with those like little questions of mm. what's coming next. I think that's the, that's the essence of a of a good show is if you get a lot of what you want, but you always mm. you always wanting to find out what's coming down the line. And sometimes with a wrestling show, you'll get all the answers, and there's no real like forwarding storyline. And I think this show had a lot. To, to come down the pipe. So, yeah, I, th- I think it was one of the better NXT uh, takeovers they've had. Uh, I still think uh, that probably New Orleans is is my favourite, but this is definitely, and I'm saying this every single time that there's a takeover, but I think this, this is definitely a top five. Yeah. Yeah, totally agree. And uh, it certainly left us wanting more. It's certainly leaving us anticipating what's around the corner. Certainly uh, for this coming Wednesday, I uh, know there's uh, Roderick Strong versus the Velveteen Dream. Mm-hmm. And uh, I believe we've got Leo Rush versus uh, versus Jordan Devlin with the Cruiserweight Championship on the line. So it's going to be a, a cracking NXT this coming Wednesday. But looking a couple of months down the line, we've got the next takeover, of course, going to be TakeOver Tampa the night before WrestleMania, April the 4th. And as I said at the top of the show, if 
you know, this card in Portland was as stacked and as excellent as it was. What on earth do they have in store for us over WrestleMania weekend? It's going to be absolutely tremendous. Um, so, uh, yeah, a quality show as far as I was concerned. And, uh, yes, yeah, so like you say, for anybody that's on the fence as to whether to watch AEW over NXT or vice versa, I think they've certainly left you kind of dangling with a few mm-hmm. threads here to possibly consider watching NXT uh, first on Wednesday night um, ahead of AEW. But um, regardless, a fantastic show and um, yes, a fantastic guest host to help me review this uh, fantastic show. But uh, Mags, we've just spoke about NXT TakeOver Portland. Um, I want to thank you so much for being a wonderful friend and a wonderful guest host and helping us out with another episode of Wrestling with Jonas. But I can't let you go uh, without, first of all, uh, giving my listeners um, all of your lovely plugs and uh, handles, where they can find you on social media, reach out and say hi. And uh, most importantly, where they can uh, get in touch with you and uh, listen to your your podcast, Badlands, Why We Watch, Five Rounds. Tell us about where we can get hold of you then, Mags. Yeah, absolutely not a problem. Firstly, thank you again for for the opportunity to come on your show. I love talking with you. Uh, great minds think alike almost when it comes to NXT. We're both uh, big, passionate fans for it. And oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, lo- I love talking to you. And, yeah, I'm just so, again, I'm going to wax lyrical for you. I'm just so glad that you're having the success that you're getting. You, you absolutely deserve it. Um you can follow me on Twitter at DJ Kirby. I'm usually in some sort of a wrestling uh, debate, uh, so come join the fun. Uh, I have a show called Badlands, which is on the Chairshot Radio Network. I share that with my podcast wife, Mr. Paul Toller, where we discuss the Mount Rushmore's of wrestling. Uh, obviously, we, we talk about the GOATs, uh, the greatest wrestlers of all time, but we also uh, have a different topic every week. Um um, uh, John Azir was recently recorded with us. Uh, that episode should be dropping in the next couple of weeks or so, where we actually did a draft, which is, was absolutely a, a ball of an episode. Absolutely had so much fun doing that. You can find that, like I said, on the Chairshot Radio Network, anywhere where you can get your podcasts. Uh, and my other two shows are on the Visionaries Wrestling Network. Same with that. If you whatever uh, podcast app you use, you can you can find that. Uh, my first show is Five Rounds, which is about UFC. Me and my son we uh, watch UFC events and we review them. Uh, that drops usually every Tuesday. And then my baby, my podcast baby of a show is Why We Watch, where I speak to wrestling fans, wrestling content creators about. Uh, their love of this uh, this sport of men and women in lacra mm. pretending to fart. Um, yeah, <laughs> just love to to hear people's stories about uh, how they got into wrestling and how they kind of felt compelled to create content about about wrestling and how they got their voice and and their words and and their uh, content out there. So yeah, like I said, you can go and find them too on the Visionaries Wrestling Network. Brilliant. And I'll make sure that uh, all of the, the handles and addresses that you've just mentioned during the description to his podcast. Uh, so just click down into the description and go and find Mags and all of his wonderful content and uh, say hi to him on Twitter. Um, but uh, be careful, he might get into a bit of a debate with you. Um, <laughs> but uh, the, you have been warned. You have been warned. But uh, thank you, Mags. Hopefully, we'll get you on the show sometime again in the future. And uh, our next episode of Wrestling with John has actually drops in uh, a couple of days' time. Uh, you'll hear my interview with the baddest girl on the planet Chantel Jordan that's going to be in partnership with Turbuckle TV so make sure that you catch that and on Saturday I've got Jamie Bell from uh, the Ringsider podcast who will be joining me for our weekly episode of Wrestling with Jonas where we talk um, everything that's good about NXT AEW Dynamite and all the hot talking points uh, from the last seven days of pro wrestling. But uh, in the meantime, please keep it tuned to the Wrestling with Jonas podcast for all of your weekly NXT and AEW updates, as I've just mentioned, uh, regular WWE and AEW pay-per-views, uh, exclusive interviews, and so much more. And if you've enjoyed listening to this podcast, please don't forget to spread the word, tell your friends and tell your family, and don't forget to subscribe uh, to the Wrestling with Jonas podcast uh, so that you can be notified every time a new episode drops. Don't forget to check out our website wrestlingwithjohnners.com for uh, links to all of our social media pages and uh, we've got a full archive of podcasts and interviews uh, there as well but in the meantime from myself and from Mags have a great week and we'll catch up with you all again soon Bye.